is it says the extract I need to start again. Hey guys, it's me again. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. So, as you guys know, I've been saying for the longest time now that I was going to make a Spanish revision video for GCSEs. And it's taken me so long, but the time has finally come that I'm here today with another revision video on how I got a 9 in Spanish. But wait, before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all my videos because I post weekly! Now let's get on with the video. So for most GCSE languages exams, you will be tested on four parts. So speaking, listening, reading and writing. And one of the great things that my teacher told me was to use Memrise. Um, essentially what it is, is an app where you can just cram in all the vocab that you need to know for your exam. So I had AQA. So there will be an AQA GCSE 91 course with a list of all the vocab that you need to know for your exam. So you can literally do 10 minutes a day um, on the way to school, on the bus, in the car. Honestly, it does not take much time, but it's a fun way to make sure you know all the vocab that you need to know. He also said that um, people who did in the past who used Memorise compared to those who didn't, did end up getting better grades. Vocab is so, so important for your exam because if there's a word that you don't know or a false friend, which may sound like a word that actually in, in reality is not actually what it means, then Memrise is really good because it can just help you pick up those extra marks and make sure you know 100% what you are reading, what you are going to be writing about. In listening, if you hear a word that you have no idea what it means, it can throw you off completely. Memrise is amazing, it really does help and it is just a fun, simple, quick and easy way to just cram in all the vocab you need to know. Number two, you guys are not going to be surprised by the fact that I'm going to say CGP books. Make sure you get the exam practice one, which is the white one, because this is jam-packed with loads and loads of practice questions for speaking, listening, reading and writing. It's got translations as part of writing, so translate into Spanish and translate into English, which is really good because in your reading and writing exam you will need to do both. Also, it's got a section for reading, so you read the extract and answer the corresponding questions. These are exam style questions, so this is really, really good at, um, practice for your exams. I think the most useful thing with this book is it comes with loads and loads of listening practice questions. And for me, listening was my weakest point. I find I found it very, very hard. And I know a lot of you guys struggle with listening as well. Um, so what it is, is it says the track number here. So it says listening number nine. And at the front of the book, it's got the website you can go on to that um, has all the audio tapes on so it will say listening track number nine um the only problem i would say is that it hasn't got the answers at the back for listening it has the answers for reading and writing which is great because you know you can it, you can self-mark so it's got the answers here however for listening all it is is it's translating the audio track into writing form however you can um read this out into google translate i know loads of your teachers will be saying google translate is really bad and yes i agree to an extent it is however you will get speaking practice by doing this so if you literally go onto google translate and there will be a part where you there's a microphone click on the microphone and everything you say it will translate it so definitely get this book it's really useful but it helps all of your skills and especially your speaking skills and yeah moving on to my next point this would probably be my favourite point to do because I think I fell in love with Spanish probably in year 8 when I went to Mexico and when I went to Mexico at my resort we heard loads of Spanish music and I absolutely fell in love with Spanish music. So from that moment on I loved, I just started to listen to loads of Spanish music and to this day I listen to a lot and lot a lot of Spanish music. When you start learning a language if you if you really enjoy learning a language you will do really well in it because you become very passionate about it and you try your very very hardest to do well in it hence why i would really really recommend you guys listen to spanish music because you're not only learning about the uh, formal spanish that you're meant to learn for your exam by memorizing stuff like that and what you do in lesson but you're learning about the informal dialect that people of that region or are used to and use on a daily basis and also one really really good thing that i 
I ideas and I picked up on with my Spanish music was I would incorporate certain phrases into my um, exams. So there would be one simile that I heard in a song and it's suave como las palmeras, which means soft like palm trees. And that phrase I use so many times. I use it in my speaking exam, I use it in my uh, writing exam. For example, a question in my speaking exam was the describe your best friend. So I said, my best, fr my best friend is my mom. Su pelo es muy suave como la seda, which means her hair is soft like silk. So from that one song lyric, I used it in that sense, and I also used it in like a similar sense in my writing exam. You normally don't use similes in GCSE um, Spanish or languages, you don't use similes and stuff. But the things that I did ensured that I would get the top grades because I went above and beyond of what you're meant to do. So that's why I would really recommend you listen to Spanish music. I'll probably link one of my Spanish playlists in the comments down below, so go ahead and check that out if you'd like to. Um, so I'm gonna be talking specifically about the writing exam. Writing was my favorite part about Spanish. I, I was really, really good at writing and I was really good at speaking. Those two were my strong points, but I especially liked writing because, I don't know, I just had so many ideas that I wanted to talk about. So my next point is, make sure you know all of your tenses so i got this book in like year nine or the start of year 10 not really knowing what to do with it because i don't know i never really used it but then when i had a look in year 11 i realized that it's got it's got six tenses inside of it and six tenses that i could include in my writing and speaking exam so I highlighted all of the tenses, or all of the page numbers that the tenses were on. And before every exam, I'd sit down in, in school, just looking at them again and again and again, and memorizing all of the tenses, like saying them in my head, like, or as a amos ice an, or as a amos ice an. You know what I mean? So I just repeatedly say them in my head. As soon as I'd get into my writing exam, the first thing I'd do is get a spare piece of paper. Well, for my mocks, I'd get a spare piece of paper, but in my real exam, I, the first things I wrote were these. So I'd write all the tenses, I'd write present tense. These are the endings of the present tense. For example, for habla, like to speak, it's hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, hablan, which means I, you, he, she, we, you, plural, they speak. So I'd write present and then I'd say o, as, a, ans, ais, an, and then I'd tick them off every time I used one. So I'd make, I'd make sure I used um, each tense two or three times. So again, for the preterite tense, I'd write at the top preterite and then the endings. So for example, for habla again, hablé, hablaste, habló, hablamos, hablasteis, hablaron, which means I, you, he, she, we, you, plural, they spoke. So I'd take them off as, I, I'd, as I'd go along and use them. If you're aiming for the top grades, make sure without fail you do incorporate the perfect and pluperfect in your writing and your speaking if you can. So for conditional and subjunctives, I just remembered key phrases that I would just rinse and use loads and loads of times. For example, I could say, Cuando sea mayor, voy a visitar mis abuelos en las afueras de Escocia. And I, I would just basically use loads and loads of phrases like that and just remember those key phrases which are very high level and use them in every scenario that I could. Also, I would say cuando era pequeña, which means when I was small or when I was a kid, and cuando era más joven, which means when I was younger. So those two are the past versions and the cuando sea mayor is the future. So you could say, cuando era más joven, visitaba mis abuelos en las afueras de Escocia. It's the exact same thing, but it's just the past version of what I just said like two seconds ago. You don't have to remember like loads and loads of different things. You can remember just a few key things and just use them everywhere. So that is the subjunctive, which is, which is cuando sea mayor, cuando era más joven, cuando era pequeña, that is the subjunctive. So moving on to the conditional, there was one phrase that I did use a lot, which is, si pudiera, lo haría, which means if I could, I would. Si pudiera jugar con mis amigos, lo haría. And that is that is a conditional phrase because if I could, obviously it's not certain that I will, but it's conditional, I would. So that is the most important thing that you can take away from this is for your writing, make sure the first thing you do when you get into the exam is write down every single tense and tick off two or three different versions of each tense per column. So make sure for the present tense you said I and you said they and you said we. And so like three, three per tense, so three for the past, three for the present, three for the future, you know, and three subjunctive, three 
conditional phrases. Now, moving on to speaking, you will get to choose one theme and you will be given one random theme to that you will be assessed on. I chose family and friends. It's up to you what you choose, whichever you're best at. But I personally felt like it was a topic that I really enjoyed because I really like talking about my family and my friends. So make sure you, you choose a topic that you can relate to, you understand and you know you will do well at. Your teacher will probably give you loads of example questions that he or she might ask you in the real exam. So it may not be word for word but you generally know the gist of what they might ask. So make flashcards of every single question and write down the perfect answer including two or three tenses per answer and get your teacher to mark it off. Try and memorise all of those before the exam and I know it sounds like a lot to memorise like a hundred or thousand different questions but you can use the same answer for different questions. Two of my practice questions were what is your favourite book to read and what is your favourite movie to watch? I said the exact same answer except I swapped over the words, I, in, I like swapped over reading for, for watching and watching for reading. So I said I love watching Twilight because it's so scary, however I think the books aren't as good as the movies and my favourite book is this. So that is the same answer that I could have used in both questions. So it just really like means that you have to remember a lot less when it comes to your actual exam. And finally, past papers. My teachers made sure we got through at least two or three past papers every week. We would do one reading and one um, listening every single week. So if your school does do that, then that's really good because I think that's really, really that was what really helped. Or if not, try and print off um, loads of practice papers. Um, I'm sure you can get specimen papers online, you can get um, the old A star to G um, past papers as well. It just helps you get a feel for that time pressure and just so you know exactly how it's going to feel like in the real exam. And you know, you get used to the st style of questions they ask, the examiners ask you, and you get used to the way things are worded and everything like that. So yeah past papers are really really useful so that is it for today guys i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a huge thumbs up and smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly anyways guys see you next week bye